Hi, I'm Randy Wells, director of the Chicago Zoological Society's Sarasota Dolphin Research Program. I'd like to spend the next couple of minutes speaking with you about how far dolphins range, what their movement patterns are. Ranging patterns were among the first questions addressed by our program starting back in 1970. Bottlenose dolphins can be found in warm and temperate waters around the world, in bay and coastal waters as well as offshore. Prior to 1970, it was not known where individual bottlenose dolphins went or how they might be organized into populations. Did the animals range widely or were they more localized? Information on ranging patterns and population structure is important for wildlife managers to be able to assess the exposure of dolphins to threats and effectively reduce or eliminate these risks. In 1970, Blair Irvine, the founder of the Sarasota Dolphin Research Program, along with his high school assistant, me, began studying bottlenose dolphins near Sarasota, along the central west coast of Florida, while working at Moat Marine Laboratory. We began tagging dolphins in the waters from southern Tampa Bay to Charlotte Harbor. Initially, we attached plastic tags to their dorsal fins. Blair Irvine is pictured here to your left with the first dolphin tag. The tags did not stay on the fins for very long, but they left marks that, when combined with fin shapes, allowed us to determine that we were seeing the same dolphins repeatedly in the same area, our first hints that dolphins might live in a localized range. During 1975 to 1976, with the addition of Michael Scott to our team, we performed additional tagging in Sarasota Bay, including incorporating first-generation radio transmitters. We found 11 of the 12 dolphins we first tagged in 1970 to 1971, providing the first indications of long-term residency. Although some nighttime radio tracks took us a little beyond the area shown in this map, the sighting locations recorded during 1975 to 76 identified a definable home range for the Sarasota dolphins in the inshore waters from southern Tampa Bay to about Midnight Pass. As Midnight Pass closed in the 1980s, the range shifted southward to the next inlet, Venice Inlet. During this research, we began to appreciate the unique individual markings on dolphin dorsal fins, patterns of nicks and notches, working much like the unique color patterns of other animals to help with following individuals through time. The nicks and notches on the trailing edge of the fin, and sometimes on the leading edge, as with this dolphin, Bobbit, are much like fingerprints, except they are acquired over time. The dorsal fin markings are very stable, and when they're documented through high-quality photographs, they allow us to identify individuals over decades. This is now the primary technique we use to monitor individual Sarasota dolphins over the course of their lives. This map shows the sighting history for the oldest dolphin in Sarasota Bay in 2020, 49-year-old FB54, whom we've observed since 1975. Each mark indicates a sighting of the dolphin, with different colors and symbols denoting different decades of observations. Notice that although her sightings occur throughout the entire region, referred to as the community range, as defined by movements, social patterns, and genetics of the dolphins in the region, many of her sightings are clustered in the northern portion of the community range, referred to as her core area. While she may travel through the entire community, she spends most of her time in her own neighborhood, and she has done this for decades. Over the past few years, the Sarasota dolphin community has included about 170 resident dolphins, at any given time, we may have representatives of maternal lineages spanning five generations. The community range stays stable across generations, as shown by this map of sightings of FB43 and four generations of her descendants. Core areas may vary across generations. Similar community ranges and long-term residency have been shown for dolphins living to the north and south of Sarasota Bay, creating a mosaic of adjacent communities along Florida's west coast. Over the decades, we have worked with colleagues to develop and test new technology for studying wild dolphins. Among these tools are small satellite link transmitters trailing behind the dorsal fin. These small tags allow us to track the movements of individuals for months, and with the slightly larger version, we can learn about dive patterns as well. When the dolphin surfaces, signals are sent from the tag to satellites, and then the data are transmitted to a receiving station where they're processed and provided back to the researchers. The animated tracks of three adult dolphins tagged in 2012 with these satellite link tags exemplify the patterns of daily movements by Sarasota resident dolphins, with female Lizzie to the left 
male bent hynix in the middle, and male peri to the right. The black dots indicate nighttime locations and the yellow were during the day. The maps with the red dots below the animations show the sighting locations of the dolphins during the two years preceding and following the tagging, as determined from our monthly photographic identification surveys. Note that the dolphins used a variety of habitats and that their movements varied greatly from one day to the next. There were no obvious patterns related to day versus night. The tracks lasted for two months until we removed two of the tags as planned, or three months when the remaining tag came off on its own as designed. The 2012 project demonstrated that this tag design is very safe for dolphins. All three dolphins have been seen frequently since 2012 into at least 2020, and Lizzie had a calf in 2013, the year after this project was completed. While the dolphins of the Sarasota community are year-round residents, their use of the habitat varies seasonally. During the summer months, they frequent the shallower inshore waters, including the seagrass meadows in green and sand flats in tan, while in the winter they spend more time in the passes in purple, channels in dark blue, and along the gulf beaches in light blue. We suspect that one reason dolphins shift habitat use seasonally is because their prey also shift their habitat use. Many of their prey fish, including mullet as shown in this photo, move into the gulf to spawn during colder months. Long-term residency by at least a few individuals has been found in many bays, sounds, and estuaries where bottlenose dolphins have been studied, but the species exhibits a wide variety of ranging patterns. In some locations, resident dolphins share bays with seasonal visitors. In other places, at the extremes of the species range, seasonal coastal migrations occur. We performed satellite-linked tracking of bottlenose dolphins off Bermuda in 2016, and it exemplified the range of variability in movement patterns by this species. Over the two months of tracking, three of the dolphins we tagged remained in close proximity to the Bermuda pedestal, as shown in the three stacked maps on the right. However, the fourth dolphin, in the large map on the left, first traveled near Bermuda, then went hundreds of kilometers to the north to the New England seamounts before traveling through the Sargasso Sea, circling but remaining well offshore of Bermuda. Knowledge of ranging patterns is crucial for knowing how to deal with man-made or anthropogenic impacts on dolphins, including understanding the extent of exposures, how to effectively reduce or eliminate these threats, and or how to restore populations that have been harmed by human activities. It allows wildlife managers to focus protective measures and resources appropriately. For example, in 2011 to 14, we used satellite link transmitters to tag 44 dolphins in Barataria Bay, Louisiana an area that was heavily oiled during the 2010 Deepwater Horizon oil spill. In the top map showing Barataria Bay, the black dots indicate all of the high quality locations we received from the tags. The middle map shows the combined home range for the tag dolphins, and the bottom shows the portions they frequented. The dolphins showed an incredibly high level of site fidelity. Reports indicated that they did not vacate Barataria Bay during the spill, and our tracking demonstrated that they remained in the area after the spill. This residency information has been very helpful to managers as they plan for restoring the populations of these heavily impacted dolphins. Back in Sarasota Bay, where we first identified bottlenose dolphin residency 50 years ago, we continue to study the long-term resident dolphins. Over the decades, we have come to appreciate that we share the neighborhood with animals that have lived here much longer than humans, and how important it is to maintain the quality of this neighborhood for all of the inhabitants.